Hi, Sue Lawson here at Weva Expo 2010 in Orlando. For those of you guys and gals who couldn't make it down here, you're missing some really great stuff. Really great guy, like Larry <laughs> Jordan here. He's had a couple of terrific seminars here. Um, I'm going to ask you to talk a little bit about the seminars, but first of all, I, I, I am going to go ahead and say that if you weren't able to make it here, the great thing is a lot of his stuff you can get online now. He's doing these fabulous online webinars, so if Larry's not coming to you, you can still go to him, and it is so incredibly worthwhile. Please tell me about the webinar. Well, one of the things we've learned is that people just don't have the budgets for training the way they used to. And what they want is they need to be able to upgrade their skills, they want to be better trained, but they can't afford to travel, they can't afford to fly. So what we did is we took all the content from our seminars where we would get people in various cities around the world and we coalesced that into an online training called a webinar. It's a seminar on the web. And we're doing it one hour every week on Wednesdays. We do a show at 9, at 1, and at 6. And it's the same content. It's just that you pick the time zone that works the best for you. And in that one hour, we'll talk about how to work with tapeless and DSLR media. Or we'll talk about how to compress video for the web. Or how to do color correction and how to read video scopes. Or coming up, we've got ones on chroma key and working with 3D video inside Final Cut. It's a condensed one-hour event that you get to watch. You don't even have to get dressed. You just sit there in your jammies. That would be me. You just sit there in your <laughs> jammies and you watch the webinar and I'm on camera so you get to see me you get to see my screen I'm running the software I'll explain exactly what I'm doing step by step so you get step by step training on the latest technology in Final Cut Studio which is one of the reasons I love being here at Weva because here at Weva we get a chance to see the latest in technology and and, and meet with some of the great people that really understand the industry and I love presenting to Weva because I get I get great crowds and they ask such wonderful questions and just to be able to have conversation with them after the event to sit and make sure that they go home with the, the questions that they came with get them answered and so they get their job done and, and improve the quality of their work and or discover a concept like social life and and being with the ooh, family. Ooh, social life, being with people, I like those ideas. You know, if you think about it, why are editors stuck in small, dark rooms? You know, we're, we're cramped up. It would be nice to get out and discover, oh, there is a sun. You know, I, who are these strange people living I, in this house? I've heard, I've heard <laughs> these rumors. I'm going to have to check these out. And because of your webinars, I now can. Today you were here speaking about uh, compressing for the web, which is so incredibly important these days. Everybody wants their video on the web and whether or not you're delivering something for your brides and grooms to be able to take a look at, putting up your own demo work for clients to be able to see. It's, it's increasingly important to do it well. You can't just kind of get by with things. So what do you think are the top three things that people don't know or should know or should pay attention to when it comes to compressing for the web? Quality is everything, and quality is determined by two things. The data rate that you select for your compression and the size of your image. As your image size gets bigger, your data rate has to increase, but that also increases the size of your file. You want the smallest file size at the smallest data rate. A really good number to look for is 640 by 360. It's a nice size image. It fits onto the web. It downloads quickly. So the three things to keep in mind are data rate controls quality, and data rate also controls file size. You want to optimize to get the best data rate possible. Second, compress your video so that you're compressing at the same frame rate you shot. Don't change the frame rate. You'll get the smoothest playback and it doesn't have that much of a difference in how much compression you're able to squeeze out of it. Keep that frame rate current. And if you really want to maintain a small file size, keep your image size smaller. The smaller the image size, the smaller the data rate, the smaller the file, the faster the download and the higher the quality. Excellent. And the motion. Let's talk about the motion on the web as well. One of the things that I saw people really like getting that aha moment in your webinar when, is when you were talking about how the web doesn't like a lot of motion. So try to, try to minimize that. A better way to think of it is if our goal is to get small file sizes, the way the compression works is compression throws away pixels that don't change position from one frame to another and does have to worry about pixels that do change position. So the more motion you've got, flickering leaves in the background or cameras that are slowly tracking, that means that every pixel in every frame is changing. You can't squeeze that down to as small a file size as if you just had a person locked down. 
So we're trying to balance. It's easy to do a lockdown shot, but it's not as visually interesting. If your goal is to get the smallest possible file size, move the camera or move the background as little as possible. If you can afford, because your clients have got faster connections, then you can afford a higher bandwidth, but your file sizes are going to be bigger. It's all a trade-off. There's no one perfect setting that makes this work. The, the key is to find the right balance, given the amount of movement that you've got, that the file size that you've got, the frame size that you've got, to get the right balance between all these different elements to get the fastest download at the highest quality. What I'd love to do is I'd love to say, Sue, here's the numbers. You want to compress at 500 kilobits a second for a, a, a standard def and 1,000 kilobits a second for high def. I'd like to say it, but it's wrong <laughs> because there is no one setting that works for all movies. You want to test. And the way that you test on compression is you, you find the part of your movie that's got the most motion. Maybe it's only two or three seconds long. If you can get that two or three second motion piece to look good, everything else will look great. Motion is the hardest to compress, the hardest to make look good. So if you can get the, a two or three second piece of motion to look good, the rest of your film is going to be great. Words to Live By with Larry Jordan. If you want more information, check out Webinar Wednesday is how I'm looking at That's it. That's it. The web address to go to is LarryJordan.biz, L-A-R-R-Y-J-O-R-D-A-N dot B-I-Z slash webinars. We have all of our past shows on file. You can download them, and we do a new one every Wednesday, and we've got tons of exciting stuff planned coming up, and I can't wait to, to have you watch the next one because it's, it's, there's just some cool stuff. It's just cool There's stuff. always cool stuff with this guy. So if you're not here at Weave, and even if you are here at Expo this year, there's still so much to learn and know, and I am constantly learning every time I see this guy present, and I see him every time I possibly can, and now I can see him every week <laughs> on Wednesdays, which really kind of makes my week complete now. You know, I'll wave to you the next time we're online together. I'll wave back <laughs> in my jammies. I'll wave back. <laughs> I just have to make sure not to have my camera on. So, Sue Lawson for Weva Expo, Weva News here with Larry Jordan in Orlando. Come on out next time, guys.